Hey, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening uh, from wherever you are. Uh, welcome back to No Code Data and AI. Um, we're continuing on the uh, rebroadcast of the LM Bootcamp that we are. Uh, we just wrapped up with data stacks, and so today I'm just going to talk about uh, one of the other frameworks that you can use to build agents and chatbots. I'm going to start my screen here. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so over the last uh, four or five weeks, um, we've been talking about how to, well, first of all, what LMs are, how they're different from machine learning, traditional machine learning, uh, and how to use them in applications. Uh, last week, we covered uh, Langchain um, and a little bit of how Llama Index works, and we looked at some code using Chainlet. Uh, this week, we're going to be uh, doing another Chainlet example with Llama Index and, uh, and, and a little bit of a code walkthrough with Semantic Kernel. Um, I'm going to attempt to, beyond doing the Chainlet example with Llama Index, I'm going to attempt to do one with Semantic Kernel as well. Uh, we'll see where we get. So if there's anything you should have learned over the last four or five weeks uh, is that LMs can do intelligent steps. Um, what allows things like laying chain and uh, semantic kernel or auto GPT to act like they're doing intelligent processes are basically some programming framework sequencing those steps, right? It's a coordination of these steps. And um these autonomous agents i mean they're not truly uh, you know intelligent but they start to look like intelligent agents uh because we're chaining these things together and uh, it's kind of the beginning of artificial general intelligence which is called agi we're nowhere close i want to thank our customers uh we're kind of like our sponsors and being able to work on exciting things and also get to learn new things that we get to show to you, all of you. We're gonna continue doing the bootcamp. Uh, we will do another series uh, after we kind of take stock of feedback and um, improve some of our documentation. Uh, our goal is to eventually do an in-person uh, in, in a few different cities. Uh, please fill out the survey if you haven't and let us know what you may be interested in. We've covered most of the agenda in our uh, bootcamp uh, so far. Um, and we're gonna take a look at how to build chatbots today, uh, but unfortunately we won't have enough time to do that. Um, as we wrapped up our data stacks bootcamp uh, partnership um, and we've sequenced another one, I may just do this next week. <laughs> That's the benefit of, of just having a weekly series. So uh, stay tuned but maybe we'll start with some code so you can take a look at it. All right, uh, today I'm gonna to cover just a review of the frameworks we've talked about. Uh, I'm gonna talk about semantic kernel, um, look at some code to, or like architecture and, and some code for what it takes to make a Slack or Discord bot. Um, we'll do it a hands-on example with Llama Index. If we have time, I'll uh, pull down the semantic kernel example code and we can go through that as well. And we'll cover a little bit about what's gonna be coming up in LM applications in the near future. Just as a reminder that you know, machine learning before uh, was hard. LM engineering is not that hard. Uh, we still do, you know, we do data engineering in machine uh, in machine learning before we can do any training. When we have clean data, we can train systems on it, and then once the models are trained, uh, they can be exposed to applications. So. There's data engineering, there's machine learning engineering, uh, and then there's software engineering. With our current uh, you know, technologies available to us, LMs, uh, machine learning engineering is actually optional. We don't need to do that. We can do data engineering and our data can end up in vector databases to help us. And then once it's in the vector database, we're able to have software that can talk to the vector database and to the LMs with prompts and uh, and we can iterate relatively quickly. The prompts 
are the way we are basically tuning the machine learning uh, model, the foundational model uh, that we use, whether it's GPT or BARD or Palm. And as we will see again, that you know it's uh, it's no longer a monumental feat to make your app intelligent. Three most popular frameworks are uh, Llama Index, Langchain, and Semantic Kernel, and they are all open source. Uh, they all at this point have different language implementations, um, and all of them at least have a Python implementation. So Semantic Kernel is a product from Microsoft. Uh, they actually had a open source project called Prompt Engine last year that just helped you know, deal with uh, ins and outs, uh, API calls with, with the LMs. Um, Semantic Kernel goes way beyond that. It provides a vocabulary and system to um, easily understand and construct agents. They want to be an operating system for LM applications. Basically, the kernel looks at uh, your question and determines from a catalog of skills um, and memories and other uh, APIs through connectors what to do. It then plans it and then executes them. And after the answer comes back, it gives you uh, something to uh, for the user. So main difference that I like about uh, semantic kernel over lang chain and lama index is that the vocabulary is much easier to understand you know they have models and memory makes sense model is like an lm model and all, you know all the other ones also have that um and then memory um any type of data they call it memory basically um they have connectors for memory and for models and then uh, we can do uh, plugins using skills and functions and skills are basically directories in a folder. And in the directory, I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, in that directory, you can have semantic functions or native functions. Uh, what's cool is that if you have skills that are semantic function uh, in a directory, you can actually use it with different programming languages. Um, and that basically abstracts the storage of skills from the actual framework. So if you kind of think beyond that, um, you can have a database of, of semantic functions that are available to like a Python version of semantic kernel or a C-sharp version of semantic kernel. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things that can happen. And I'm not saying that you can't do it with, with link chain or LAM index. It's just, it's out there already in semantic kernel. And then native functions are like C-sharp functions or Python functions or even Java. You can have a code that runs and uh, you can call native functions from your semantic functions and it'll basically parse out the prompt. It'll run the uh, native function, the code that you have first, bring it back, it'll put it back into the prompt, which is a semantic function and it'll execute it. This is what uh, your skill directory could look like in semantic kernel. This is the, from their examples. Um, so let's say there's a, children's book skill. One function is called book ideas, another one is called create book. So here's the you know, book idea function. It's just a file. The skprompt.txt is what's inside it. And then there's a config file that basically describes it and gives the parameters for that uh, call if it were to go to a um, you know, open AI call. Um, and then this is the function for create. So these are both semantic functions. Here's a more uh, comprehensive example using semantic functions. This is an architecture called Project Miyagi that you can use to create copilot, quote unquote, copilot apps. Um, you know, Microsoft is using the same technology to create their Microsoft Office copilot apps, right? Um, and the Project Miyagi actually can serve up a Teams chat, a website. Uh, it can be a, 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 a chat GPT plugin. It can be a Bing plugin. Um, and then it has an internal uh, loop that basically um, you know, allows you to use it elsewhere. So 
what we see here is that there's semantic kernel right here, and it can use Langchain, Llama Index, Jinnah, and Jarvis. Uh, so it works with them. It can also use other vector stores. And you can have other plugins using um, you know, serverless functions if you wanted to. Uh, again, take some time, take a look at this uh, repository. We'll be you know, sharing all this um, as a slide share and as a blog post later. Quick review of what we've covered so far, right? There's direct API with tools. You don't have to use any framework. You can just talk to the OpenAI API using code or no code. Um, quick and dirty, validate how prompts are working. Uh, of course, it takes a lot more effort to get data from another place to augment your, your prompts. Um, and it's hard to do kind of agency. There are some no code, um, tools to do this, but they end up using Langchain anyway. So uh, from a pure direct API call, it's hard. You basically have to reinvent the wheel if you want to do this stuff. Uh, with uh, Llama Index, it's actually very similar to the way that you can uh, interact with Langchain. Um, it's your data and the LM and Llama Index and um, your API. The only thing I, I guess I forgot to add is that it stores data in a vector database uh, for you, whether it's in memory or third-party service. And you can create automations out of it. You can create apps out of it. You can add lane chain to it. It's really uh, relatively easy to use. We'll take a look at it today. Um, actually, it is not just in Python anymore. There is a, this, uh, this is now available in Python and TypeScript. That's how fast technology moves, guys. Uh, there are some agency that can take certain actions for you, but uh, generally does not uh, do the same kind of stuff that LinkedIn can do. I apologize. Google Slides is taking its sweet time. Let me try this again. Hey, Aqui, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're coming through. I guess that page just isn't loading. Uh, let's try again. I was wondering if it was a bandwidth issue or it's just Google. Yep. Thank you, Google, for failing at the right moment. Let's, uh, all right, you know what? I may just have to walk through this like this because uh, it's just not going to happen otherwise. Uh, okay, uh, well, we'll continue forward. Um, we've talked about LangChain last week, we took a look at a LangChain app. Um, and then Semantic Kernel, just like with any of these frameworks, right? You can just add it into your mix. Um, and Semantic Kernel can work with all of these just you need to give it some uh, some love. Um, the main thing I like about semantic kernel is the mentions of vocabulary. It, it it does also have a C sharp version, which is super fast. Uh, and then of course Microsoft is backing it and using it for Microsoft Copilot tools. Uh, you can get lost in the .NET if you don't know .NET. Uh, C sharp does need to be compiled to use it effectively. Although they do have a C sharp plugin for the Jupyter Notebook, so you can prototype it pretty quickly. Um, isn't as cool as Langchain or Llama Index, but I think it'll get there. And as promised, I do want to tell you guys about, um, you know, how to make a Slack bot chat bot. And then in a subsequent, uh, session, we'll actually build one up with our data. Um, so when you're making a chat bot and there's a really good article, uh, that'll be the notes, architecting a discard bot the right way. And what it talks about is that you have to separate your, you know, back end from whatever is responsible for uh, talking to your uh, chat service, whatever it is, right? And so if you wanted to uh, serve a Slack versus a Discord, technically the same service works. It's just that you have a wrapper that formats the data for that system. And then, uh, again, you can have other uh, types of systems interacting with the same, same API. 
Let's take a look at uh, some of our code. I'm going to go ahead and pull up. Um, can you see my uh, Visual Studio code? Akwe? Yep, coming through clearly. Okay, great. Yeah, so if you've been following along, uh, we have a, a repo, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and bring up. And uh, we, the latest commits from yesterday, so you can just pick it up from there. Just drop this in the chat uh, for me. I put it in the Zoom chat. Uh, you can put it in the YouTube chat for me, please. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's in the documentation, and I promise I will improve it. Um, but for this example today, you really don't need to do anything uh, except for um, you know, get an open AI key into your into your ENV file. Um, the rest of this, uh, and maybe the SERP uh, API key. Um, actually, no, this one just uses open AI. And you know, last time we looked at a chainlit app that uses our um, LangChain uh, system with some tools that come out of LangChain as well as some of the custom tools that we created. Giphy, Foursquare, and then uh, also uh, talks to some of our data that we uh, indexed into a vector database before. Today, we're going to look at a uh, Chainlit app that is backed by uh, Llama Index. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this. The reason I'm calling it Chainlit Papers is that it's actually going to be looking at uh, research papers uh, that I downloaded from archive.org. <clears throat> if you're not familiar, Chainlit's a framework that uh, allows you to make a chat interface without having to make a chat interface. Uh, as you can see, all I'm doing here is importing libraries and telling it you know, where what to do in terms of loading the data and then what to do in terms of um, you know, how to execute the message when a message comes in. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff I think we can do with this. Yeah, so um, I've got my uh, chat window up, uh, taking a look at the terminal. Looks like it did everything okay. Um, note, I, know, I do note that it uh, it didn't index anything and that's because it has some data from previous run. So I'm going to actually remove this directory. That's where it stores the index locally. I'm going to run it again. And there it goes. And it recreated the index. So now can I go here? Um, I'm just going to ask a quick question. Uh, and I know I've put two uh, I've put two papers in here actually. I've put the React paper and the Flare paper, which are approaches to uh, basically creating agents that are more intelligent than just a, you know LM APIs, right? Um, and then, I can ask a question such as, can you outline the React paper for me? Okay, so it actually went to one of the papers and let's see what it got from sources. Uh, I guess it got something from the second source as well. So this basically is showing us that it it, it found relevant data using a vector you know similarity, right? So definitely found React. And, and so I'm wondering if uh, yeah, so even uh, the second source has something that's mentioning React, right? Uh, let me ask you a different question. Can you differentiate React and Flare for a five year old? That's uh, interesting. Well, I guess not for a five-year-old, but let me try it. 
Can you explain the difference between the act later? Will that work a little bit better? Are two different methods or models used for different tasks? Described as a model for integrating decision making. Player is not describing details again, thought, but is is a generic method that can be effectively retrieve additional information about the generation. It performs baseline tasks on all tasks and data sets. Two different models. React focuses on you know integrating. So it it basically took a really uh, twenty four page two twenty four page uh, document. This one is how many pages? This one's thirty three pages, right? And this one is. 24 pages, and it basically answered some questions for me. Um, and if I wanted to add other PDFs, and I'm just opening up my Explorer here, I have two more uh, documents that I can add to this. Right. Actually, you know, before I do that, let me ask a question that I know it's not in there, right? I know it's not in that context. So I'm going to say, can you tell me the difference between chain of thought and tree of thought? So there's nothing in the um, in the context that has tree of thought because tree of thought is a relatively new idea. Now chain of thought is in there because you know GPT 3.5 has data up until March or so. Um, and tree of thought came a little bit after that. And so um, it did give me an answer, right? But they don't have, it doesn't have anything uh, that it can help. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload the chain of thought and tree of thought papers. I'm just going to upload all the papers that I have just in case. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is the chain of thought. And then this is the tree of thought. These are just, you know, more PDFs. I just added it. Uh, now, because I haven't re indexed it, it's not going to show up. Uh, I know I can make it more intelligent so that every time there's new documents, it'll you know, auto index, but right now it doesn't. So if I ask the same exact question again, so it did find something, but you know what? Let me just uh, maybe it did automatically index it. Let me try this again. No, uh, I think it. I think it just needs to be restarted, and I'm I'm just gonna do what I did yesterday, which is I'm gonna delete the storage, which I know is gonna reset the index, and I'm gonna just run it again. <clears throat> oh, wait a second. Restarting. Cool. So let's try again. Uh, same question. I gave it earlier. So now it does have some context, right? I gave it the actual data for uh, two different uh, approaches to uh, basically reasoning with an LLM. And it found it from the PDFs that I gave it. So that's basically Llama Index. Now, Llama Index can do more than PDFs. Um, it can do a variety of, of data sources. So for example, if I go to Llama Hub, which I have it up here, let me just grab it. <clears throat> if 
Okay, so for example, um, there they have loaders for a knowledge based website. So any given website, if you um, basically configure it to uh, you know, identify the title and the links and whatnot uh, using some selectors. I bet, I bet it uses beautiful soup uh, library inside. Um, and any knowledge waves website that you can, um, you know, configure it, it will, it will basically allow you to create an index and then talk to it. So using pure Llama index or Llama index with Langchain. Um, just to come back to the hub. So the hub has tons of plugins um and they just change their website um yeah they just change their website so we'll say data loaders that gets data into the index and then agent tools meaning what it can execute on your behalf uh so it's got some actions it can take outside but um, it has, for example, the ability to pull data from a relational database or from Airtable. I like Airtable. Uh, let's see. Appified data set. Uh, so, for example, here, there's an Appify content crawler. That's an API that you can you know, configure at Appify. And Appify is basically a web scraping service that is relatively easy to use. Um, and then, let's see what else could be useful for you. There's a couple of different database providers, I guess. Um, you can look at PDFs. Uh, you can do JSON, CSV, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, you know what, you know, let's try this, right? So I'm gonna, download a PowerPoint version of this talk. I'm curious to see what it does. All right, so download this and upload it. And I'm gonna do what I did earlier, which is I'm just gonna reset the index. And I'm just going to run it again. <clears throat> now, I put a new type of file in here, so it's going to complain to say, hey, you don't have everything you need, so you need to do something. You need to install these libraries. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and uh, paste it. Oops. I'm going to just put this in my requirements. And that way, it will be there for you when I commit this change. So, transformers. Okay. A lot of stuff to power, to manage PowerPoint, huh? Let's see. I don't know why I just download Torch for this, but whatever. Actually, I already have Transformers, so I'll do this. Okay, sounds there. Oh, well, maybe not. Give it a second. Yeah, so while this is doing this in the background, um, I can uh, just show you guys some code uh, that uses um, the stuff we've been learning to make a Discord bot. Um, and 
this bot basically has a couple of components. Uh, it has an app, right? And it has a bot. And it has a way to, uh, you know, basically manage its documents. And all this stuff is used in the uh, ETL process. So different uh, types of files that uh, this team uh, it wants to put into the vector database. They have just made a little doc, you know, uh, document loader. So this extracts the um, markdown, the things that it needs for markdown and how it's going to understand that markdown. It's a little more, more complicated than I think it needs to be. Uh, but that's because the markdown may be uh, complicated. Um, it then also uh, exports the PDFs, uh, the data from the PDFs, I guess, into JSON. That's over here. Um, it also does YouTube videos, right? So if we take a look, run ETL, it's essentially, you know, extracting and then saving uh, data into JSON. And then the back end. And this is the place the app. So let's take a look at the app. This app uses LangChain, OpenAI, uh, Gradio to make a simple UI. And so you can use it. It's kind of like Streamlit or um, Lit, but not a school. And this API down here uses Langchain to make an agent, right? And that is available to the user using this, um, you know, basic Langchain um, uh, agent. Now, if you wanted to connect it to Discord, this code right here basically exposes a uh, an API. Uh, that connects to Discord. So, you know, coming back to that example, how you make a chat chatbot with uh, with these technologies. This is the app.py and this is the bot.py, and then they have ways to manage their data and run uh, Lang Chain Agent um, in a couple of different places. Let's see where we're at. We're here. Okay, it looks like everything got installed. Uh, I'm gonna run this again. I did blow in my. Oops, don't do that again. I already have this stuff. I need to do this. Chainlit run. And it's going to hopefully pick up this PDF. Oh, sorry, the PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> I really don't know why it needs all this reading a PowerPoint should not be this complicated. Unless it's gonna actually read the visuals, we'll see. Continue letting it go. Um, the other thing I can show while we're waiting on that is uh, semantic kernel. So semantic kernel is on GitHub so you can take a look at it. And uh, you know, I was explaining that it's it's in .NET and in Python, um, and the code can use the same skills. Different the .NET can use the same skills, and Python can use the same skills. And that's because these skills are basically folders. So there's a chat skill. Take a look at the children's book skill, right? And this is the function, and then the function body is basically this file. So the same skill and function can be used with a Python semantic kernel application or a C-sharp semantic kernel application. Don't, I'm gonna keep repeating why that's cool, but uh, the reason that's cool is that technically you can separate the code for all your skills. You can have a database of repository of all your skills managed separately and then allow people to use different frameworks to you know, access those skills and to use those skills. Um, there are some interesting um, tools that are in here that show you the use of uh, kind of a native function inside the use of a semantic function. So let's see what I have here. Ah, there, let me do that. 
So you have a Q and a skills, context query. Mm, I think it may be in the sample. I have to go to the sample. Uh, yeah, I have to go to the sample. So um, I'm going to just go to the Python or uh, I'll do the C sharp sample. I'm back, I guess, in the Python sample. So um, here's a chat application. And it's using this semantic function, right? That's in it's that directory that we have earlier. Um, and then let's take a look at the API. Again, it's using a semantic function that it, it's in that directory, and that's how you can load it up. Um, and if we take a look at the C sharp code. We have some C-sharp functions in here as well. Um, but here's an example of you know, using, uh, let's say, native function. Uh, where did it go? Yeah, this is the text skill, which is here. Right? It's a path static te text skill. And it's just C-sharp code. Uh, now we can do combined LM and native code. So this is where it's. Um, Picking up a web search engine skill here. And we're going to look at the summarize skill so you can see. Okay. So the summarize skill is down here. Let me just pull this down. Uh, I have to go up a couple of directories. There's something in a different window. There's some of skills. So that C sharp code is basically talking to this function, and this function uh, is combined with the native function. So the native function is the Bing search. Okay, uh, I want to find one more example where you can actually see it in line. And uh, I believe it's going to be here. Yeah, here we go. So here's the um, search skill, and we can use that search skill inside this prompt. So this is a semantic function. Essentially, it's a prompt, and I can use something that is coming in from somewhere else. Um, and that way, you can have compiled code, like this web, web search engine skill, and use it inside your prompt. And what it will do is it'll plan the execution of this first before it then executes this. All right, let's see where we're at with this. Ah, well, finally, uh, it's up and running. So let's take a look. So I uploaded the PDF of my presentation. And uh, I guess what I can ask it is, um, what is AGI? There's no explicit mention. I guess it didn't read the PDF. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it couldn't read the PDF. I'm oh, sorry, the PowerPoint. It's too complicated. Um, let me try this again. I'm gonna delete the storage and I'm gonna run it again. <clears throat> Mm 
looks like they didn't have to do all this jazz earlier, like did earlier. Anyways, while we wait, uh, yeah, next uh, next session, what we'll do is we'll either go down the semantic kernel path and uh, and use it, uh, maybe the Python and or the C-sharp version, uh, or we'll continue down the line of making a chatbot, uh, like a Discord bot. I kind of need to do both um, for this project, for this Iris project, so it's more complete as a, as a learning, you know, a starting point for everybody. Um, so... I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll figure out which one I'll do next. Unfortunately, it looks like um, it's taking a lot longer uh, than I anticipated to basically read a PDF. Um, so no such file. I guess I did. Oh, you know what? I understand what it's doing. I think I understand what it's doing. It is actually going and extracting images and, and everything because that's how it had that file um wow it's pretty impressive um i get it all right well i'll have to test it with a smaller document because mine is about 20 megabytes um but all in all um i think i got the point across uh which is that lum index has a lot of connectors you can use um Elasticsearch, you know, uh, Outlook, um, Twitter, um, you name it, WhatsApp. So uh, yeah, download the code, change up the loader, try something else, and uh, you should be able to basically talk uh, with it uh, pretty easily. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to join the Discord, and uh, I'll get the invite link in here in a second. And feel free to ask questions or just directly ping me on there. And I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. So here we go. Mm. And Aku, if you could drop that in there, it'd be great. Thanks everybody for uh, joining. Um, and just a few uh, last uh, items before we wrap up. So let me see. There we go. Um, so to continue learning, uh, as I mentioned before, YouTube, blogs, open source projects, Discord channels for those open source projects, um, like the one we just sent. Uh, what's next for LM applications? Um, there's this, I didn't show this earlier, but there's this uh, really beautiful repository that explains how uh, LMs are progressing and uh, basically has all these resources for LMs um, and the different models. But here's a simple... <laughs> um you know examples like why supervised learning is uh, important unsupervised learning can create crazy monsters and supervised fine tuning can make it uh you know a little bit better but then rlhf which is reinforcement learning with human feedback it gives us a happy uh you know happy face um but what i like about it is this animation that it's just really explains the evolution of LLMs, right? So the NLP has been around for a little while. I remember using word to, word to vec, which is how we vectorize words. And then we can have encoders and decoders, which we need both to be able to do, um, you know, what we do in natural language processing. And then we had the, uh, where's transformers? I don't quite see transformers. Anyways, uh, transformers right here, uh, basically, 2017 or right down here. Anyways, um, these are all of the closed models, right? And these are all the open models. And the other a really interesting, cool picture that it has is 
Uh, where did I go? Ah, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> So with the number of parameters, as they keep increasing, um, the LMs can do more and more and more. Uh, what I've learned, though, is that to do more parameters, you need to have more data, more quality data, and that we're running up to a limit. There's just not enough data to go make the LMs better. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. Um, so you know, companies that have more quality data can... Uh, make this better. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty smart. I think it's pretty smart. Uh, especially ChatGPT4, it's pretty smart. So, oh, back to the presentation. Um, key takeaways, and I've mentioned this before, uh, LM engineering basically has three pillars, prompt engineering, data engineering, and software engineering. You can start with data engineering if you come from a data engineering background. You can start with software engineering if you have a software engineering background. And if you're not either, you can just learn prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is writing English. And if you can get ChatGPT or Bard to uh, you know, do things that you wanted to, that can be put into a program. But you need all three to, to make agents that are um, useful for people beyond a, a chat button uh, like ChatGPT. Um, I'm going to continue developing Iris. And uh, we're you know, collaborating with Datastax on the CASIO library that is in Langchain in Llama Index soon. I think probably we'll soon try to get into Semantic Kernel. Um, and we're going to continue uh, talking about advanced retrieval, reasoning patterns as they come along. Um, I don't think you need to go read the paper. Just wait for it on Langchain to get implemented or some other framework. Uh, and then the next bootcamp series that we'll do, we'll go deeper into auto GPT, super AGI. So please, uh, you know, fill out the form and let us know if you're, if, and when you're interested. Thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate uh, all your interest and uh, your feedback uh, helps us uh, do a better job. So thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye.